Welcome to National Arbor just outside Washington DC for Sea Air Space 2017, the largest maritime exposition in the United States. Organized by the Navy League, the Sea Air Space Exposition brings the US Defense Industrial Base, private sector companies and key military decision makers together for an annual innovative, educational, professional and maritime based event. We have our 30, minute, 30 millimeter system and we're introducing it for the first time into the United States to uh, show to people, show to companies it could go on any, uh, any surface ship. And uh, some of the nice features are it can shoot uh, point up to plus 70 degrees so it could actually shoot at air targets if that was needed. So we are a team with Raphael out of Haifa, Israel and they sell the Typhoon weapon system literally across the world. So they have a 25 and a 30 millimeter system. This is based on that. So it shoots at 200 rounds a minute and it also shoots what's called the air bursting round. Uh, ATK out of the United States makes an air bursting round 30 millimeter and you can program that burst on time or distance to, uh, to air burst so you have a higher probability of hit against air threats like the drones or UAVs or things like that. Well, it can go on anything as small as a 78 foot uh, like a Mark 6 patrol boat for example all the way up to the full-size aircraft carriers it could go on. It could go on anything big or small. It can go almost anywhere on the ships. On the, it's a surface mount product. Hi Steve, good to see you again. Nice to see you, Xavier. What can you tell us about the future surface combatant? Uh, Xavier, thank you very much for asking. This is our concept ship of what a future surface combatant could look like. It's uh, as the Navy and the various think tanks and organizations have done studies on the future fleet architecture, it's increasingly clear that they're going to need a combatant with a very large radar to help take the fight to the enemy. Something that could operate outside of, of uh, specific threat waters but have a radar long enough to see over the horizon and defend the fleet and defend uh, the homeland and allies against ballistic missile, hypersonic threats, and might even be uh, a ship that could uh, operate uh, UUVs and UAVs. So this is based on our San Antonio class LPD hull form. In this particular model, we have uh, an S-band and X-band radar, uh, including a 35-foot uh, radar array. We have a rail gun uh, up forward and it's outfitted with vertical launch missile systems and can carry embarked aircraft. So we've been listening to our customer and paying attention to the studies about the future fleet and we are uh, asking that this uh, ship concept be considered and that we get feedback to see uh, how we might improve it to meet the needs of the United States Navy going forward. This variant of the Vigilant is, uh, is similar to the uh, one for the Marine Corps for the MUX program that uh, I believe the Marines are going to be moving out with shortly. Uh, this aircraft has uh, the same capabilities. Uh, it's able to perform the 450 nautical mile mission, be able to stay about 11 hours time on station at that mission radius and carry up to 600 pounds of payload at that mission radius. This variant right now is carrying sauna buoys on its side payload bays and in the center line bay is carrying a Mark 50 torpedo. The Vigilant is being designed to have a lot of flexibility in its capabilities. So it can perform the ASW mission, it can perform sensor missions, it can be equipped with an airborne early warning radar to extend the capability of the fleet. It has a lot of flexibility built into it, a lot of payload capability built into it. What you're looking at here is uh, DARPA's latest experimental airplane, the Lightning Strike, recently been de designated or given the designation of the XV-24 Alpha. 
Uh, we were awarded this contract last year and we just completed uh, successful subscale testing at, at Patuxent River out in Maryland just last month. Um, the XV24 Alpha is using disruptive technology or hybrid electrical uh, uh, distribution power to power these 24 ducted fans uh, in the, both the, the wings and the canard. It's vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, and it uses a V22 Rolls-Royce engine. The maximum speed is about 400 knots and it cruises at around 200 to 250 knots. The interesting aspect of this, uh, besides the unique aspects of its propulsion using distributed electrical power, is the amount of available electricity once it's in cruise mode for such things as payloads. I'm the founder and, pre and uh, CEO of Eastern Shipbuilding Group. We've been uh, building vessels since 1976. I started the yard. I was in the fishing business, a commercial fishing business. I started the yard to build two fishing boats for myself. Uh, we graduated into tugboats, ferry boats, oil field vessels, construction vessels, dredges, Arctic trawlers, and now uh, offshore patrol cutters for the uh, United States Coast Guard. The award was announced in uh, September of 2016 after four or five years of intensive work putting together a proposal and working with the Coast Guard uh, and we received the notice to proceed October 10th of 1916. Well I'm very excited about the offshore patrol cutter. Uh, the, the project started during my time as Commandant of the Coast Guard. Uh, at the time we had about 12 companies that were competing uh, to build this. Uh, after I retired from the Coast Guard, we did a down select, the Coast Guard did a down selection to three companies that then competed uh, for the design which ultimately was selected uh, by the Coast Guard Eastern Shipbuilding Group, uh, which provided the most affordable design and the most capable ship. So it's uh, very gratifying to me to be able to be associated with this project because this is so vitally important to our United States Coast Guard. The offshore patrol cutter will be a project of 25 ships built for the United States Coast Guard that will give them uh, much increased capability, uh, greater range, uh, better technology, and better living conditions for the crews that will serve in them. Right here behind me we have the Orbital HEK design concept for the Argam extended range variant. Uh, the U.S. Navy is currently looking at options associated with extending the range of their current system Argam of which Orbital HEK and our division is the prime contractor for. If you take a look at the differences between a Harm and an Argam ER and, and an Argam, you'll see that they've gone from more precise seeker capability from the Harm to the Argam and then from the Argum to the Argum ER, you're going to see an extended range variant. So uh, this is really what that design concept is, is providing to you. The biggest difference from the Argum to the Argum ER is you'll see the mid-body wings have been removed. We've gone to an aft actuator type of a system. Um, and that's just to reduce drag so that you can get to those extended ranges. The status of the program is the U.S. Navy is uh, currently in coordination to finalize the definition of what they're looking for. Um, and at that time, then we fully anticipate then moving forward with them uh, in, in the development phase and or participating in the development phase uh, to some extent, wherever they're going to define the boundaries uh, for our participation. Right here we have our Gremlins offering. Uh, this is a, a, a program that we've, uh, we've been competing for for phase one. We just recently won um, Actually, we won phase one moving to phase two, and uh, this will be the aircraft that we uh, worked, that we're gonna uh, put together 
and uh, offered a DARPA for, and, and we think to win phase three. The concept here is that it's an air launch and air recovered, and, and General Atomics has been working on this concept for a number of years, and we have a family of small UAV, small UAS, small unmanned aerial systems that we've been working on. This is an air launch, air recovered version. We have an air launch that's, that is a kind of a, uh, a lot of the common components, but it, it's, uh, it's a different shape that allows us to work in more contested space. So it's air launch, it, but it doesn't recover. But the idea, this would be our kind of mainstay. So this would be a level of effort weapon system that might operate from, say, a, uh, an EF-18 uh, growler, you know, in an, in an electronic warfare uh, kind of concept. Or maybe it might be something on the MQ-25, which the Navy's looking at for their, for, which is going to be primarily a tanker. But for future applications, this might be a nice capability that that, that that airplane has to extend its ISR footprint as well.